What you're about to see is a real-life story. Taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game. The carefully worked out parts by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Braddock. Captain Braddock. Ready. You know, they say that a good bartender takes a little and leaves a little for the next round. Alias John Riley based his whole racket on that theory. It was one of the smoothest operations ever brought to our attention. And he was most difficult to apprehend. Riley's appearance was very disarming. He looked about like one of your neighbors or the man you work with at the office. He set up shop in a small town of fairly well-to-do people and soon gained their confidence. <laughs> <laughs> he tells a great story, doesn't he? Ah, but that isn't the half of it. If you fellas can hold still for just a minute, I'll let you in on a little secret about him. Now, wait a minute, Claude. You promised, remember? Oh, come on, John. Why, these fellas here are my closest friends. It's all right, isn't it? Well, it's your house and your party, but I don't think this is the time to talk business at a social gathering. Well, uh, I... I'll make it brief. If you have something exciting, well, out with it, Claude. There's no one in the world that I would rather do something for than you fellows. So, I won't beat around the bush. You couldn't say good morning without beating around the bush. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'll give it to you straight. Riley here is an oil geologist, and he's found himself an oil field. Well, that's very nice for Riley. Congratulations. Thank you. Just a minute, Fred. John's going to let us in on the deal. Steady now, Claude. You're getting a little ahead of yourself. I know it. But I've got to let the boys know they can get in on the ground floor. Now, it's too bad these oil deals aren't as safe as insurance. With insurance, a man can expect a comfortable return for his money. Oh, Hal, don't start talking about insurance. Now, this oil field happens to be right in our own backyard. Well, then why don't you let Riley tell us about it? At least he knows what he's talking about. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> well, I guess you're right at that. After all, my business is hardware. Oh, John, uh, would you mind telling these hardheads here what I'm trying to say? Well, I still don't think this is the time for business, so I'll make it brief. Besides, it's getting late, and I know you fellas have to get up in the morning for an early golf day. I'm sorry, Riley, but I have to get up even earlier than the rest. Besides, I've sunk all my available cash in a real estate venture, so I couldn't take advantage of an oil deal even if the returns were guaranteed. Okay, Henry. But when we're rolling in money, don't you dare to say I didn't tell you. I won't, and I sincerely hope it happens. Well, good night, you duffers. And a pleasure meeting you, Mr. Riley. Thanks, Simpson. And believe me, I think you're the smartest man here. Even though I am in a position to guarantee returns, real estate is still the safest investment. Well, thanks for a nice evening. See you sandblasters on the first tee at seven. Now try to be early for a change. If that happens, the world will come to an end. Riley was such a smooth operator, he didn't waste time on the easy marks. He just let them all sell themselves and each other. Good morning, Mr. Riley. This is an unexpected visit. Good morning. I'll be with you in a minute. How is the oil field going? Not bad. But I want to talk about real estate this morning. Oh, well, sit down. I'm thinking of making Springfield my home from now on. So I thought I'd better buy a house. Good. Maybe I can help you. I've already put my Cleveland place up for sale. Where is your house in Cleveland? Maybe I can arrange a trade. On Green Street, out in the Shaker Heights section. Well, we don't have to waste time looking for a trade. Do you know of a good buy for around 25000 Small house with nice grounds? Got just the place for you. I think you like it. Here. Here's a set of photos covering the whole place. Oh, yes. Not bad. Say, I'd like to take a look at this house. And if it's all right, I'd like to send these on to my wife to get her opinion. Well, can my girl mail them to her while we look at the property? Oh, that won't be necessary. I'll have to write to her tonight anyhow. Meantime, I'd like to take a look at this house. Sure, sure. Take it right over there now. John Riley would have made a great fisherman. He offered his bait with just enough finesse to attract his fish. 
then sat back and waited for him to swallow it. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning. What can I do for you, Brother Simpson? Get me a financial report on John Riley. He wants to buy a piece of property from me. John Riley. What's his business? <clears throat> Calls himself an oil man, geologist. What's his address? Cleveland. That's a big town. Well, I couldn't wangle the street number. It's on Green Street in the Shaker Heights district. That's all I know. I guess Broad Street and Bond can run him down from that, if he's listed. Soon as possible, eh, Charlie? I'll get right on it. Call you when I hear anything. Thanks. With his big fish nibbling, Riley returned to business as usual. Being something of a psychologist, he also knew that there's no better bait for suckers than an attractive woman. So he had his pretty partner join him, just to keep the small fry ranging round the hook. Good morning, may I help you? I wanted to see Mr. Riley. Anderson's the name. Uh, this is Mr. Porter and Mr. Stimson. Yes, he mentioned you gentlemen. I'm Wanda Hurley, his secretary. I just arrived from Cleveland. How do you do? Mr. Riley. Yes? Mr. Anderson and some gentlemen are here to see you. Good. Send them in. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I just happened to run into Hal and Fred, and they asked if they might come along. Of course. Say, grab a seat for one minute, will you, fellas? I'm just finishing my final geological survey. I'm not so sure. That does it. This field is a natural. Do you really think so? I'd stake my reputation on it. Well, I just wanted Hal and Fred to see your office and get better acquainted. I had a chance to tell them more about your proposition Sunday while we were on the golf course. And they surely are interested. We certainly are. Oh, yes, indeed. I know Mr. Porter is in the insurance line. I don't believe I caught your business. I do a little digging myself. Some sort of construction work? No, my work is much more grave. You see, I own the Stimson undertaking parlor here in Springfield. Get it? Grave business? Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Very funny. Well, Claude, I may not be needing any local capital after all. I'm expecting a wire from Chicago, which will probably take care of the whole thing. Now, just a minute, John. After all, you say the field is near Springfield. I think you should give us local citizens first crack at your proposition. Oh, yes, uh, we'd certainly appreciate your explaining the deal to us. As you know, uh, Claude gets a little mixed up when he isn't talking about hardware. Well, all right. A promise is a promise. This geological map is one I compiled myself from findings which took over three months of intensive field work. Now, as you may or may not know, oil can be found only under certain conditions. Those conditions were formed beneath the Earth's crust millions of years ago. But the geologist should recognize those subsurface conditions from top surface structure. Are you following me? Oh, sure, sure. It's just like building a big New York skyscraper. If geologists hadn't told those people that the foundation could stand it, they never would have built those things. That's right, Fred. You've got the idea. But to get back to oil structure, this spot here shapes up perfectly. And what's so great about it, it will be a shallow well. So what does that mean? Well, it costs so much per foot to drill an oil well. And you get just so much a barrel for the oil. You see, the deeper you go, the more you lower your margin of profit. Exactly. That's why I spent so much time looking for a structure like this one. Excuse me, Mr. Riley. This wire just arrived from Chicago and I thought it might be important. Will there be any answer, Mr. Riley? No, that'll be all, Miss Haley. I was showing a place when you called, Charlie. That report on your man Riley came in this morning. Oh, that. Listen to this. John Francis Riley, geologist, 2119 Green Street, Cleveland. Educated, Cleveland Public Schools, Texas A&M. 
one of the developers of numerous oil fields, including the Gruno Field, Houston, Texas, Osage Holdings, Durant, Oklahoma, and the Fremont Field, New Hall, California. They give him a credit rating of close to a quarter of a million. I guess I'd be safe selling him a piece of property. And investing a few dollars in his oil deal. That's what you had in mind, wasn't it, Brother Simpson? Well, I... I might look into it on the strength of that. Let me know what you find out. Got a few idle dollars myself I'd like to put to work. I'll do that, Charlie. Thanks for the report. Well, there'll be a small fee for this service. I'll charge your account with it. Yeah, there generally is. I often wonder how you bankers weather a hard winter. Riley, the master fisherman, knew when his big fish was nibbling and just when to set the hook. Can I call you back? Okay, bye. Sit down, Mr. Riley. Say, I got a good reaction from my wife on that property. How much would a 90-day option cost me? Option? Why, well, yes, I'd like to have her come down and take a look at the place. You know how women are. I'm almost certain I can hold down on that place for you. The owners are not that anxious to sell. No, I'd rather be positive. Let me give you my check for 500. We can deduct it from the purchase price. I'll make it out to you, and then if by any chance she doesn't like the house, I'll merely forfeit the money and you can keep it for your trouble. Believe me, I don't think there's one chance in ten I wouldn't be able to hold on to that place for you. But if you'd rather to uh, keep peace in the family, we'll handle it that way. That'll be fine. Oh, uh, I've been giving that oil deal of yours a lot of thought. And now that I've cleaned up my own real estate deal, I might uh, invest some money with you. I don't know that you can, Henry. It all depends on how much the boys want to put up. They're pretty eager, as you know. Then I have a Chicago group on my neck. Yes, I, I know, but I have uh, 20,000 just lying in the bank, and if you think there's a chance, I'd sure like to make an investment. Well, I don't like to see you lose out just because you were more cautious than the others. We're having a meeting tomorrow, and I'll put it up to them. Well, you'd certainly be doing me a great favor. And, of course, you get the same deal as the boys. My personal guarantee that you get your money back if we don't strike oil. That's fine. Just fine. Here's the check. The least I can do is to hold on to that house for you. Well, if you're sure you can hang on to it. By the way, Henry, it might be a good idea if you drop by my office tomorrow at 10 for that little meeting. I'll do it. Good, Henry. I'll see you then. Riley also was an artist at playing his fish. Gently and carefully, he led them to the landing net. My reason for wanting to expedite this matter is a simple one, as you'll see from a copy of my lease. If I start drilling within the next three weeks, the owner of the property receives 8%, the usual royalty. But if I haven't spotted in by that date, the percentage doubles. That's what I told you, I think. And 90 days after that, it goes up again. How much capital will you need to bring in this well, John? Oh, in the neighborhood of $100,000. That's a pretty rich neighborhood for my blood. That much, John, for a shallow well? Oil is a gamble, Claude, and we need a little cushion. Well, now, according to my figures, we can raise 45000 right here in this room. Charlie Fry wants in if it's all right. Good. How much is he good for? Fifteen, twenty, maybe. I could dig up another ten. That leaves a balance of about twenty-five. Well, anyhow, it was a nice try, Claude. But I can't hold off that Chicago group any longer. Well, can't you get them to make up the difference? <laughs> you don't know that gang of cutthroats. It's all or nothing with them. Well, there must be some way for us to keep this in the family. There's got to be. How about setting aside a block of stock for the small investor, say in units of $100? Oh, well, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, there's huh? a good idea. We wouldn't that have a work. bit of trouble doing that, not in this town. The small investor has always been a headache in a deal like this. They never fail to cause trouble. Look, we can raise the rest of this capital among our friends, people we know. Well, all right. If you fellas think you can raise the rest of the money from small investors and at the same time get proxies to vote their stock so they'll stay out of my hair, I'll string along with you for a few more days. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Sure. Come on, let's get out and get to work. Come on, let's get So the big fish rounded up the little fish for Riley. The master fisherman dropped his last enticing piece of bait into the pool. The guarantee of the return of their money in case of failure. 
Here are the guarantee agreements, Mr. Riley. Thank you. They're complete except I left a space to write in the time limit. You better sit down, Wanda. I'll need you to witness our signatures. Yes, sir. Here are the agreements, gentlemen, if you care to look them over. Now, about the time limit on the return of your money, what would you suggest? What do you think it should be, John? Oh, I'd rather hear from you fellas on that. We don't know anything about the oil business. Well, I have a suggestion for the time limit, Mr. Riley. You don't mind. Thank you, Wanda. We'll let the gentleman decide that. Now, don't be so harsh on the young lady. She probably has a good suggestion. Very well, Wanda. What's your suggestion? Well, I thought you might make the time limit the same as you did with those friends in the Texas field. You forget they were all very wealthy men. Actually, if the field hadn't come in, they never would have missed the money. How much of a time limit did you give them? Oh, we merely decided to make it read as soon as possible with a maximum of 10 years in which to return their money in full. However, they never had to exercise that part of our agreement. The wells are still pumping. I see no reason why we can't have the same time limits. Well, well I think right, that's okay. All right, all right, all right. Fine. We'll write in that part of the agreement. We'll be in business. Oh, there's just one thing more we must agree on, gentlemen. I am not to be interfered with in the drilling of this well. And since I'm personally guaranteeing your investment, I reserve the right to stop drilling at any time if the findings should indicate I'm pouring my money down a dry hole. You're oh, the oil sure, man. Sure, of course. Take a well, it looks like take a little, leave a little Riley has gone overboard this time. He's guaranteeing to give it back to the circus. But as I said before, Riley was one of the smoothest con men that this department ever had to deal with. In a moment, you'll see why. The capital for the Riley Oil Development Company was raised, all right. 100,000 nice, round, fat dollars. Now, for someone less smart than Riley, this was the time to pull out. They actually started to drill for oil. Now, about this time, I received a long-distance telephone call. A call that I had been waiting for for some time. And I took off for Springfield. Greetings. Hello, darling. How was the trip? It's in the bag. Aren't you going to kiss me? Why? I've only been gone 24 hours. Sometimes 24 hours can seem a long, long time. That'll do for now. You're my secretary, remember? Keep your mind on the job at hand. Never let you down yet, have I? No, but I don't want to start now. We're too near the payoff. It will come soon, I hope. Will tomorrow be soon enough? Mm, I'll settle for that. As mysteriously as he had started, Riley stopped drilling for oil. I want everything to go off on schedule. I want to get to the bank uh, just before it closes. I'll set my alarm watch for a quarter of three. Hello. Yep. What? Shut down. What? When did you shut it down? Oh, Sheriff. Excuse me. I know. The oil well shut down. Suppose we check in on this, Mr. Riley, huh? Oh, thanks. Close up, Chuck. Get the baggage from the hotel and meet me at the station at 3.15. I'll be there. And don't leave anything lying around in case of fire. Oh, don't worry. Charlie, have you seen the paper? No. Look at this. To all investors in the Riley Oil Development Company, Mr. Riley sincerely regrets that it seems expedient to suspend operations. All investors will be reimbursed in full according to the terms of the agreement. Contact Mr. Fry at the Farmer's Bank for further details. Has he been here? No. Call Sheriff Martin. I just called him. He's out. He's what? We're looking for John Riley. Well, he's not in. If you're investors in the company, contact Mr. Fry at the bank and you'll all be paid in full. And here's a letter of regret. I'll take that letter, Sheriff. And now let's hurry over to the bank with Miss Hurley here.
Maybe you can tell me what this means, Mr. Riley. Exactly what it says. I thought the bank would be a good central location from which to pay off the investors in our real fate adventure. I have everything right here. Yours is right on top. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Government bonds? If we'd have wanted to make an investment in defense bonds, we could have bought them ourselves. I Perhaps that's what you should have done, gentlemen. You're both under arrest. You may have a little trouble making it stick. I think you'll find our transaction perfectly legal. You may be right, but we'll let the courts decide that. I don't think the courts will find any loophole in my contract with my investors. It merely calls for the return of their money in case the field does not come in. I've returned their money. You mean 75% of it? These bonds were purchased recently. They're not worth the face value until they mature. And we'll have to wait 10 years. It is exactly the time limit of my responsibility under the terms of our contract, remember? Leaving you with an immediate profit of 25%, which isn't bad in any line of business. Except for one thing, Cartwright. You happen to be in the wrong business. Cartwright? Yes, that's just one of his names, his real one, I think. He has several others that he uses from time to time. But I... I don't understand. We had this man investigated, and the report was all right. Yes, here it is. They gave him a very high rating. Oh, this is a report on a legitimate geologist who lives in Cleveland. A very successful man by the name of John Francis Riley. Any good grifter would have used his name as an alias, particularly if he wanted a report made on his financial standing. I'm certainly not responsible for this similarity in names nor for the fact that they investigated me. Nor for the fact that it happened several times before in Texas and in Oklahoma? Well, I fell for it all right. Well, it may turn out to be a very good thing after all. Because if it hadn't been for that report, we might never have located this man or even had a charge to hold him on. Well, if I may ask, what charge are you holding me on? Impersonating another with intent to defraud. And that's a felony in this state. Yes, but how did our request for this financial report help? Well, he covered his tracks pretty well in his past performances, but the pattern was usually the same. He always selected a geologist with a very good financial background. Now, after his last little caper, we asked the bond and Broad Street Agency to notify us any time a report was requested on a wealthy geologist. It was a long wait. And this was it. Fortunately. Well, that's all, Sheriff. Oh, uh, can you hold the two of them until I make arrangements for transportation? I think I can hold them all right. Good. Well, we certainly thank you, Captain. Well, that's all right. I'll try and get back the rest of your money, gentlemen. Or I should say what's left of it. Oh, uh, just in case you gentlemen desire any more government bonds, might I suggest that you buy direct from the manufacturer and eliminate the middleman? You know, there's an old saying that it's best to do business with an old and established firm. Uncle Sam. I was able to fulfill my own personal guarantee to Walter Cartwright, alias John Riley. He's now serving 10 years. But we're not always so lucky. There are still many master fishermen throwing their bait out for suckers. That's why you, the public, must constantly be on your guard. Otherwise, it could happen to you. Closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you.